Welcome back to Sub-Zero Hero. So, do you remember our last episode? We were playing much fancied Volarenga. We beat them 1-0, even though we were handing out debuts to 15-year-olds all over the shop. Well, in our very next fixture, we played Starbeck and we crushed them 5-1. And our 15-year-olds were making really positive contributions to the team. For the first time in this series, I thought I had cracked it. How wrong I was. We're struggling this season. Last season, we didn't suffer from second season syndrome, but maybe third season syndrome is a thing because we are really up against it this campaign. Okay, so here's the league table. It's not pretty reading. We're down at the wrong end of the table. 12 games have been played. And I'm already looking at this season that's one more about survival and maybe mid-table obscurity at best rather than the push for European football that I was hoping it was going to be. Granted, we're still a comfortable gap between us and the bottom three, but we are a long way shy of that top four as well. And not only have results been going poorly, the performances have been pretty weak as well. After that last episode, Things were looking so bright after that 1-0 win against Vullerenga. And when we beat Starbeck 5-1, things were looking so positive. But the next two games were worrying. We lost 4-1 to Bode Glimt. It could have been 8. We lost 3-0 to Christiansund. It could have been 6. So we made some tactical tweaks. Went a little bit more cautious. Pulled the wingers back. So rather than a 4-2-4, we were playing a 4-4-2. And it seemed to steady the ship. Because in our next game, we got ourselves a 2-0 victory against Bran, who were consistently near the summit of the table. And you'll see that Paul Runnigan started this early season on absolute fire. But he got an injury that kept him out for the best part of a month. And that coincided with a bit of a poor run later on in this form. So we then managed to make a little bit of progress in the cup. We got a creditable draw with Mulder in the league. We got a 2-0 win against Tromsø in the derby and that result was doubly significant because it also marked the first goal for the club for young Christian Tysperovic. Hartvigs had made him work hard for it but he managed to slot home from a very tight angle and that young man started the campaign pretty impressively alongside that goal. He also got us five assists in that early part of the season but his good form has dried up a little bit as you might expect for a 15-year-old playing top-flight football. Well, after that Tromso result, we breezed past another lower league outfit, Gruel Rood, in the cup before things took a turn for the worse. We lost 2-1 to Rosenberg. Now, considering in the past they've put five or six past us, 2-1 probably looks like it was not too bad. Believe me, my friends, we could easily have conceded five or six in this game. Their XG was over three. They had 25 shots, 18 on target. We had poor performances all over the pitch. We relied on Pedersen to keep this score respectable. And then we whimpered our way out of the cup as well. We'd beaten Starbeck 5-1 earlier in the season. They beat us in extra time to knock us out of the cup. So no European football through that route. Then we were listless when losing to Lillstrom 1-0. We were playing one of the lower sides in Strom Godset. A 2-2 draw on the form that we were in doesn't look too bad, but look how late their equaliser was. And in our next game, it was a similar story. We were in the ascendancy, I would say, in this game, but another late equaliser meant we only snatched a point from it. And then in our most recent game, we played OK against Start. We had the best of the XG. We went back to the 4-2-4 just to try and get us a win, but we did not really convert our chances in this game and Runnigan and Empa look like maybe they can't play up front together which is probably where we should have a look at the tactic that we're going to try and play for today's game to end this poor runner form. So our poor runner form has partly been due to some really poor performances from some of our key players. Chief amongst those Jonas Hartvigson who's played 11 times this season has got one assist and no goals. And it's part of a bit of a worrying pattern with Hartvigson where he seems to have a good season followed up by a poor one, bounces back into life and then follows it up with another poor one 
And this trend continues where he goes a season where he averages above a seven and scores lots of goals. Then he has a season where he averages six and a half and doesn't really contribute to the first team. Last season, 21 goals in 29 appearances on the back of a season where he only got eight goals in 28. I think he's going through one of his lean seasons. He does have that fairly inconsistent performer trait, which seems to mean that rather than play well one week and badly the next, he plays well one season and then badly the next. And we've seen these long barren runs from him before, and he's in the midst of one right now. However, I don't think poor performances from him are the sole reason that we are doing badly. We've also had poor performances from our defenders. Trondagna Bratton back on loan from AC Milan, and we've extended that loan to get us to the end of the season because he really is the only centre-half we have who is putting in anything like a performance. Lars Ul Idoy Hansen, well, he's averaging below a 6.4, and then Heidecker down here as well is also having a bit of a torrid time for the first team. He's really not been in any kind of form for us whatsoever. He's averaging lower than a 6.8, but he's been throwing in plenty of performances recently that are all kind of of that mid-6 standard. So we are really struggling to find a partner who can play alongside Bratton. Heidek has gone on holiday at the moment to try and freshen him up a little bit. And Lars Ola Edoy Hansen is making mistakes every time we pick him. So we might go for something a little bit different today. A bit of a wild card. As well as poor performances, I think my approach to our play has also been partly responsible for why we've not done too well. I've gone into the habit of, because we're developing these youngsters, maybe wanting to blood too many of the 15-year-olds all at the same time just to try and help their development, rather than picking players who might be a little bit more experienced and might be able to put in some better performances for us. So maybe that's something I've got to have a look at. And I think the other problem that is self-inflicted, really, is that I'm always trying to squeeze our best players into the same lineup, even if that means that perhaps we're playing a system that I know is not going to be optimal. And part of that has been trying to make sure that I get Runnigan into the team at the same time as getting Hugo Emper into the team. And I'm thinking that maybe those two just can't play alongside each other. I mean, Hugo Emper is really nothing more than a target man. He's not quick enough to play that more advanced forward role, really. Neither can he really be a poacher. His teamwork is not really good enough for him to be a pressing forward either, to be honest. And with tackling of three, even if he closes down players, I don't think he's going to win the ball. And Runnigan, well, he's certainly got the attributes that are more suited to potentially being the more advanced in an attacking pairing. He's certainly quicker, but he has these traits of wanting to come deep to get the ball and always trying to be able to play in a teammate. And even if we train that out of him, doesn't really have the dribbling and the finishing to be the more advanced of a front two anyway. So we've come to the conclusion that maybe for the good of the team, certainly for the next few games or so, it should be Ronigan or Emper rather than the two of them together. Now that means we're going to be having one of our best players on the bench, but I'm thinking that might be what we need to try and start getting some results. So We've got two different tactics that we're training and we got lined up now. The Teddy Sheringham approach where Runnigan's going to be a deep line forward. But if that's not working, we could play Emper instead as the target man, as the more Peter Crouch kind of approach. I'm thinking the one we're going to go with today is Runnigan, partly because Emper has not been in the greatest of form, but also he's going through a spell where he's training pretty poorly. And I've noticed in the past with Hugo when he's training poorly, he sometimes throws in some pretty bad performances. It also means that we've got an advanced forward back in the starting lineup, so we can try and get in behind the opposition defence a little bit. Against my better judgment, we're going to go with Hartvigson for that, because some of his poor performances recently have come as he's been playing as a wide player. Maybe throwing him back up top 
with a player that's set out there just to try and feed him the ball might help him a little bit. However, if he is playing poorly, maybe we could get Skogdal to come in and continue his development because he's pretty quick as well. Another player who is developing really quite nicely. He's one that perhaps we didn't focus on so much in the last episode because I thought there were players better than him that came through in the last youth intake, but this personality means that Jonas Skogvan Pedersen is training really, really well. He's a pretty quick option now. In a flat 4-4-2, he's not that comfortable playing on the left side of midfield. He wants to be a little bit further forward. You never know. We could always bring him off the bench as well, although with that finishing of a 6, bringing him on as a striker might not be serving his development the best. The other little dilemma that we've had is that by far the best player that came through our last youth intake was Yuri Gratchev, training incredibly well, playing like dog muck, I'm afraid. He's averaging below a 6.5. We're going to continue with him today, but there is a player that is hot on his heels for that left back role, I think. Asad Jawad is also training pretty well. He's got a good personality for that as well. But I'm starting to think long term, we're so short of good defenders. It's a little bit of a shame that perhaps the two best prospects we have are both over at left back. At 5 foot 11 and with jumping reach of 10, could Jawad make a left sided centre half something we could desperately do with? I mean, certainly the tackling is good enough. The bravery and the aggression are okay. The concentration is not too bad. If you have a look at the passing and vision, maybe even a ball playing centre half, the marking and positioning look fine. It's the strength and the jumping reach that we'd probably have to train along with his heading. But because we're a little bit desperate for a centre half today, I'm going to play him there because Edoy Hansen is in no form at all and Heidecker is off having a little bit of a rest because he started to get very, very tired. So I'm thinking we're going to give him a go there today. We're going to play a flat 4-4-2. It means that Hartfordson goes up front, so Hugo Riding is going to be over there on the left. When we have brought him on, he's not done too badly this season, and we are desperate to try and halt this poor run of form. The team that we're playing are Haugesund, who are two places above us in the table. We need to go out there, and we need a convincing performance. More importantly, I think, we need three points. Okay, it's an away game for us today, so that's going to make it even more difficult. And we're playing Jawad as this centre-half. Whether that is a terrible decision, I think the next 90 minutes might confirm for us. But we've been really struggling to find any players to play in defence other than Bratton that can put in anything like a performance for us. We're back to the 4-4-2 today. We've got two out-and-out -out wingers. We're giving little Ty Sperovic a rest as well because he's not been great for the last four or five games. And we're bringing in Shurnison. Hopefully, he can use his pace to help us on the counter today. Talking of counters, we've got the header clear. Hartvigson is either too slow or too disinterested to win the ball for us. And we've got a bit of defending to do. We've got another chance to get it away. Here's Runnigan. Deep lying forward. So hopefully that will suit his player traits of wanting to drop deep to get the ball as well as the player trait of him wanting to play killer balls to a strike partner. That strike partner is Hartvigson. It was a difficult chance that he just had. But the form he's in, that was pretty typical where he has guided it past the post. Now we got Runnigan in. He's made the keeper work. And this is... The brightest we've started for quite some time. We're not even 10 minutes into the game yet. And we've created a couple of good chances. We've got the ball wide to Riding. And he has got past his man. Cannot get a cross into the box. But you've got to say, I know you've not seen the previous 11 games. This is the brightest we've started for a while. Corner goes in. Riding heads over. Now Riding's on a free kick. And he's worked the keeper again. This is encouraging. We have had some spells in some of our games where we've played okay, but we've not been starting them well. Certainly not been starting them as brightly as this, but 
We haven't got the lead, so we've still got some work to do. Not seen a lot from Shurnison yet, and we've gone behind. I thought that was going to be ruled out for offside. Ah, oh, is it poor young Jawad who I've thrown in there who's lost his man? Possibly, possibly. He's stepped up, he's left right. Oh, and he has guided the ball past Pedersen, and we are in a mess now. That lifts Haugesund up to 8th in the table and that drops us further deep into problems. Unless we start getting a couple of wins soon, I'm worried the board might start asking a few questions. I'm certainly worried if we drop into that bottom three, we could well be in some trouble. Shurnison has now had an effort. I think he was offside. And again, you're looking at this XG thinking if we were still level... We'd be asking some questions, but certainly to be behind, I'm not sure we deserve, but they've got in behind us again, right in. They've had another effort. And this time, Jawad has had to scramble the ball off the line. Now, we are really in trouble and they're coming at us again. This is looking like a bit of a worrying spell during this series. Honestly, to get sacked this late into the game would be... A little bit of a travesty. We've achieved much, but there's no trophies on the table yet. Just a couple of promotions. And if we get relegated or if we get sacked, then I guess you'd have to declare this. A little bit of a failure. Hopefully we're being a little bit premature with that talk, but we need to start improving pretty soon. shurnison has got the ball. He's quick, but he's not a great dribbler, and he is just running down cul-de-sacs and has not managed to get across into the box. We're going to throw out a demand more shout pretty early on. And we have, oh, we've allowed them to score a second. And our defence is just all over the shop. We've got two 15-year-olds, a 19-year-old, and a 17-year-old all playing together, and... Grachev misses his header. Nobody's marking right again. And I think you'd say Bratton's to blame that time. And we're 2-0 down. And now, well, you'd say the match stats have completely turned around. And we are looking in all kinds of trouble. And we're not even into half time yet. And Jawad is absolutely having a terrible game, isn't he? His rating is a 6.8. But the things he's doing out there on the pitch are really costing us. I think we're going to have to make a change at half-time at centre-half and bring a Doy Hansen on, who I don't think will play any better. But we are really struggling. Pedersen's got the ball in his hands. He's launched it forward. Harfixon's nowhere near it. But we've managed to get the ball to riding. I guess you'd say a goal back before half-time. And there's something for us to work with. But now Harem has just back-heeled the ball to the opposition. And we are just playing poorly. We are doing as much teamwork training as you can possibly imagine. Loads of match preparation training and set piece training just to try and dig us out of this poor run of form. It's not working at the moment though. We've gone up against some teams in very winnable games and we've not been able to get any victories. We're at 41 minutes. And look at Haugesson playing around us like they're Brazil. And we are a team of children. Bratton is now getting sucked into the poor play in the defence. And goodness me, where do you go with this team talk? I have absolutely no idea. I'm going to have to fashion something. We'll see you for the second half. OK, the water bottle has been thrown. That demotivated a few players. It was probably the wrong thing to do, but sometimes you just do it out of frustration. And we've also made two changes to our back line. We have taken off Jawad. That was all on me. That was an experiment that I don't think worked at all. Adoy Hansen is on. And we've also brought on Ola Christian Jensen, a defensive midfielder at right back. We don't really have another right back apart from Oscar Berg, but he was playing so poorly. We've taken him off as well. Hartvigson's in. He's offside. He's finally hit the back of the net. But he'd moved too early. We're also going to throw it up to an attacking mentality as well. Which may mean that we get even further exposed at the back. But we're still at the stage where if we could just get a goal, we might be back in this game. I thought 
We had a good chance of a counter there, but Burnson couldn't get the ball to a teammate. And we're going to throw out another shout as well. We've got, what, 65 minutes on the clock, and we've not really threatened that much in this second half at all, have we? They're in again. We've given them the ball straight back over on the wing there. They've crossed it in. But we are not picking up any of these second balls, really, are they? And they've got a ball into the box. Adoy Hansen just clears it, and it's right back to their players once more. Now we've finally got it clear. Riding's got the ball. He's a winger, but he's not that quick. He's at least smuggled it to Hartvigsen. If we could just get the consolation of Hartvigsen getting a goal out of this game, I think... That might be something that at least gives us a little bit of hope. I think it's time to make our final change. I'm thinking we give Hugo the last 20 minutes. See if his aerial dominance can just try and get us a consolation. Okay, Hugo is on. We've left Hartvigsen out there, even though he's pulling a 6.3 rating at the moment. I'm thinking we might just have to dispense with Hartvigsen's services for the next six games or so. Because he is going through a terrible, terrible run. This is his last real 13 minutes to try and get himself a goal that's going to continue his stay in the team. Otherwise, I think a different option up front is going to be necessary for us. We've had some chances in this game. But we have given away a couple of really soft goals to a pretty average team. And I think we're going down to a 2-0 defeat. We've got Shurnison out there carrying a knock. He's played poorly. Herum on a 6.4. I think he might need to spell out the team as well. He's meant to have, according to the coaches, a very consistent approach to his game. But the last five games, he's been absolutely wretched. We've gone down 2-0 again. And that is just another really poor performance from our team. So, that leaves us just above that bottom three. The points gap looks pretty comfortable. And, you know, back-to-back -back wins. And we zoom up the table. But performance-wise, we are absolutely nowhere. It's time to go away. Have a little bit of a head scratch. Hopefully, by the time we come back, we've rescued what is starting to look. Like a bit of a desperate situation.